Hello, I'm Carla. This is Diana. Thanks for practicing with us today. We will be working on external rotation of the thigh so that we're getting these hip openers. This is a general practice that you can do daily. It is um, absolutely safe and easy for everybody to do. There's no shishasana in the practice, although we will introduce halasana and shoulder balance if that's within your practice. Um, you'll need some general basic equipment, your classic Iyengar equipment, blankets, bricks, foams, a strap, um, and having a wall for today is a great option. Um, coming to Shvastikasana, you're going to take the cross of your legs, letting that outer thigh release down. Have enough blanket support underneath the buttocks so that you get a lift of the lower spine and extension in the lumbar spine. As you extend the lumbar spine, don't lift your shoulders up to your ears. Keep the shoulders relaxed, especially this top shoulder. Release down to the elbows, keeping that upper arm long. Each inhalation, extend the spine, extend the sides of the body. Each exhalation, just quieten any tension in the jaw. Relax the shoulders. Bring the hands into the prayer position and let the eyes close. We begin class today with the three forms. Just so that we can center ourselves and bring your focus to the mat. breath. And then exhalation, release the hands to your thighs and to open your eyes. Keep the lift of the chest and then change the cross of the legs. When you're crossing the legs in this manner, the thighs roll from the inner thigh to the outer thigh. So as that inner thigh rolls up and out, the outer thigh rolls down and in and you're getting that external rotation. So Feel, take your hands next to you, use the fingertip support to get a lift up through the sides of the body. With that lift of the sides of the body, that extension of the side of the body, you automatically get a nice lift in the chest. But feel, are you protruding the front ribs and the abdomen forward? Use the hands as scaffolding. Exhale, draw the abdomen back to the spine. Maintain that length in the sides of the waist and the lumbar spine. As you grow tall in the spine, can you release the outer thighs down? Can you let the knees settle and find that rotation from the inner thigh to the outer thigh? Wrap around. And as the outer thigh descends, can you press into the fingertips, connect with the buttock bones and lift up more. Each lift, use the inhalation to enable that extension and tallness. Each exhalation, pacify the thighs. And just be in this full Shvastikasana for a moment. And without disturbing the base, the spine, bring the hands again into Namaskarasana. And release. We're coming now to Baddha Konasana. In Baddha Konasana, the feet are together and the knees come apart. So you may need to adjust how much height you have underneath the buttock bones. If you take the blanket at an angle, you're able to line up the edge of the blanket crease with the edge of the thigh and the buttock. And as you bring the feet together and take the knees apart, notice, does the lumbar spine slump? Does your dorsal back hang out? And are you going to need more height to pull yourself up Get that sacrum into the body. Again, as you exhale, find that rotation. As you exhale, let the knees descend. 
If you're able to reach the toes without having to slump forward, then absolutely hold, wrap your whole fingers around all of the toes, not just the big toe, and then lift up tall. You have to bring the feet as close to the body as possible. And if that doesn't work, just keep grabbing onto the ankles and lift up tall. Broaden across the chest. Exhale, press the knees down with that exhalation. You want to feel an openness in the groin region. And as you open up the groins, you want to extend from the inner knee to the inner, from the inner thigh to the inner knee. And from that inner knee, you want to wrap around to the outer knee. From the outer knee, draw that outer thigh in, draw the outer hips in. If you need support, if Baddha Konasana is a challenge for you to do it free, then absolutely take your buttocks right up against the wall. The back is supported against the wall. Whenever you need to release, you exhale, you soften, you release, you extend the legs in Dandasana. Once you've had a rest in Dandasana, you're coming to Supta Parangustasana 1 and 2. So you need to make sure you've got space to the side of you for Supta Parangustasana 2. If you need, we'll take a strap to hold onto the foot and also have a blanket for your head to support your head and your neck if that's what you need in your practice. Having a blanket will help you just to let the neck and the shoulders release so that there's softness in the neck. Yes, so you're supporting just the neck and the head. Make sure that the shoulders are away from the ears. When you come into Supta Tadasana, take your hands at the base of your skull and just lengthen the back of the neck. But at the same time, from the upper shoulder, release the skin and the flesh and the muscles of the outer shoulders down. If you have a narrow mat, you can actually grab onto the edges of your mat to allow that. And once you've got that softness in the neck and the throat, with the knees bent, you make sure that the flesh of the buttocks is away from the back waist, and then extend the legs to Supta Tadasana. Supta Tadasana, you're not in Shavasana, you are alert. So you extend the feet as if you were standing on the feet. Firm up the muscles of the legs. So hug the muscles of the legs to the bone so that the knees are firm and feel that length in the spine and the sides of the body. If you want to open up the chest and the armpits, just taking your arms up and over your head in Urva Hastasana also just allows you to stretch a little bit more. And as you exhale, you bring the arms back at your sides. You're going to take your right leg in, hug your right knee into you, into Ekapada Pava Muktasana. Make sure here that you haven't allowed the buttocks to completely swing out. Get that length in the right side of the waist. And then taking the strap around the ball of the foot, you're going to extend the leg. Hold with two hands so that there's space for you to broaden the chest. Keep that left leg alert and alive. And then really coil the root of the outer right thigh towards the left foot so that you're lengthening that, left, that right waist. Be here for a few breaths. <laughs> Don't hold the pose by holding the breath, just breathe. With each inhalation, see, can you stretch open the back of the calf as you extend the heel up? Can you open from the center hamstring, just allowing the muscles of that leg to extend? And then when you're ready, you're going to take both straps in the right hand. Keep your left hand either on your thigh to help you press this left thigh down, or if it's more comfortable for you, take the arm out in line with your shoulder. And then keeping a compactness of this right heel towards the right hip, exhale and take the leg out to the side. When you inhale, stretch from the inner thigh through the inner knee to the inner heel. And then from the outer heel into that outer hip. The same kind of extension and rotation you had in Baddha Konasana. If you need to bend your elbow, right elbow, press it down to the floor. This will help you to not capsize so much so that you can maybe press that left thigh down some more. Keep that firmness in the right outer hip. 
And at any point when you need to come up, when this becomes a battle, you're going to bring that leg up. You can slightly bend the knee if you need to. That was Sukta Parangustasana number two. Bend the knee to release and just extend the leg. Here, just allow a breath or two where you're just in Tadasana and you're not fighting to be in that hard Tadasana. Feel the effects, absolutely adjust props if you need. Feel the effects of that Sukta Parangustasana one and two on your body. Now we're coming to Ekapada Pavamuktasana, bend up the left leg. So here, this outer thigh has to extend away from the armpit so that there's length on both sides of the body. That left buttock bone should not be swinging out to the side. As you lengthen, that left buttock bone extends towards the right heel and that right leg is alive and alert. Take the strap around the ball of the foot. And just be here in Supta Parangustasana 1 for a little bit of time where you're exploring the extension of the leg when you breathe in. As you breathe out, firm up the muscles of the thigh, resist this front left thigh away from you so that the knee is firm. The right leg also needs to stay engaged and alert. So press this inner thigh to the floor. When you've been there for a few breaths, make sure that the neck and the shoulder are relaxed. Relax your jaw. See, will the leg come a little bit closer? Can you just challenge your flexibility a bit? At any point, if something doesn't feel right in your body, you come out of a pose. Take both straps in the left hand, pinning this right leg down. You can also, if you do battle, take this right foot just slightly out. The further you take it out, the more leverage it gives you, and then come to Supta Parangustasana 2 with that control of the leg. This is also sometimes called Pajra, or Supta Pajra Parangustasana, so Pajra means to the side. And then again, if you need to rest the elbow on the floor, it helps you to just be in the pose a little bit longer, soften the neck throat, and then open up that groin. Feel that Baddha Konasana action where you are opening the groin, extending through the inner knee to the inner heel from the outer heel, wrapping into that outer hip. When you've been there for a few breaths and you're ready to come up, engaging that leg, bending the knee, come up. And then again, just bend the knee to release the strap, come to a supta, actually shavasana for all intents and purposes. So a soft supta tadasana where you can just feel the effects of the pose. Bend your knees and we're rolling onto your side. So we're coming now to anantasana. Anantasana is um, bringing the one leg into Baddha Konasana and you're doing this on your side. So it is easier, I find, to first lie on your abdomen. And then when you're lying on your abdomen, you extend the arm out and you lie on your side. If you are unbalanced, you can bend the bottom leg. It behaves like a little tripod and you want to bring the hand up. If you're unable to keep this armpit to the floor, you're going to have a folded blanket for underneath the armpit or a towel. Um, try to let the elbow stay in line with the rest of the body, not bringing it forward. So lying on your abdomen, have a strap nearby and again, um, whichever side. So we'll, Diana's going to lie on her left side first and we'll bend up the right leg. So extend the left arm out. You don't need this blanket or do you? Let's no. so set it aside and then you'll decide if you need it or not. And then as you roll onto the side, if you bring the legs into Tadasana position, then you have um, a little bit of a tripod. So if the more alert you keep the feet in Tadasana and you find a little bit of softness in the thigh, soften the muscles of the thigh, just extend the legs, you'll find a little bit of balance. So here, the top hip aligns with the bottom hip and the chest is nice and open. Then you're going to bring up your head, take your head in your hand. Here, underneath this armpit, you want to absolutely flatten down. And if it feels unbalanced and you need support, you'll take it. Keeping the elbow back. 
the fingertips come towards the hairline. You want to keep your gaze just softly in front of you. And once you feel confident in your balance, extend this top arm, the right arm along your body. Just feel that you're able to maintain your balance there. From here, we're going to move the leg into the tree pose position. So bend up the leg, take that foot right up onto the thigh. And this is that same Baddha Konasana leg where you're opening the groin, extending from that inner groin to the inner knee, wrapping around and tucking that right outer hip and buttock in. And then once you're here, take your big toe and bring your knee towards your foot. Use a strap if you need, and then we'll straighten up the leg. Once the leg is straight, you again want that same action of Supta Parangustasana 2, where the legs are strong, the openness in the pelvis is there. There's that full alertness and extension of the leg. Once you've been in the pose, keep your or gotten into the pose, keep your gaze just in front of your chest on your mat. Lift the chest. And just be there for a few breaths. Maybe you can take the leg closer to you once you've been there for a bit. And when you feel ready to come out of the pose, you're going to bend that leg, replace the leg on top of the left one. And we'll turn around and do the other side. All right. So you want to be lying on your right hand side, have your strap, extend the right arm out so that that armpit gets to the floor, the legs are alert. Take your head up. Once you're there, you want to keep the balance by keeping the legs strong and all the joints of the body are aligned. When you feel ready and balanced, try to take your hand at your side. Just compose yourself by taking your gaze to the front of your mat and then bending that left leg, coming to Baddha Konasana with that left leg exactly like Rikshasana too. Here, if you hold on to that foot, you want to feel that this hip bone is pressing into the forearm. So as you tuck in that left buttock, bring that left hip into the body, open the pelvis, and you should feel that hip bone pressing in. Keeping that alertness in the outer thigh, that openness in the groin, you're gonna bend up the leg, and you'll either hold on to your toe or take a little loop and then slowly extend the leg. You still wanna keep that left buttock action coming in so that the hips stack one over the other. And if you dig, if you let that buttock hang out, it's going to drop you. So keeping that openness in the front groin, both legs strong, extended. Keep breathing in the pose as you exhale, soften the top shoulder. As you inhale and extend the legs, also lift the chest. And when you've held the pose to your capacity for the same length of time as you did the other side, when you feel ready, exhale and release the leg down. All right. And then we're coming to stand in um, Tadasana. So you don't need any support right now. We're coming to Tadasana. Tadasana, if you need to take the feet hip distance apart, you absolutely may, but keep the inner line of the foot parallel. Otherwise, bring the feet together. Keep pressing into the heels and hugging the muscles of the legs and feet together. So don't you? Yes. You want the feet together. You want the knees firm. So you want to hug the muscles of the thighs, cut the outer thigh back. Hug the muscles of the upper thigh into the body, outer hips in. And then also make the arms strong. So feel as you hug the muscles of the upper arm and the forearm to the bone, the elbow locks, the fingers extend. As you extend the fingers down, lift through the sides of the body. As you lift the chest, have you managed to quieten the front ropes back? Are you breathing? And also make sure that your inner groin isn't popping forward. So you have to now from the front thigh, roll the inner thigh back, press into the heels. Coming to Urbahasta Tadasana. Urbahasta is taking the arms up over your head. Keep this top shoulder soft, breathe. As you exhale, 
firm up the legs. As you inhale, extend the spine, lift the chest, extend the arms up. And you be there for a few breaths. Explore that extension on the inhalation. Soften the jaw, the neck, the shoulders on the exhalation. When you feel ready, release on an exhalation and just take a few quiet breaths in Tadasana. So you can do Vrikshasana with the arms, shoulder distance apart, like Urva Hastasana, or you can do the classic where you're taking the hands into the prayer position, Urva Namaskarasana. For Vrikshasana, be against the wall. It's exactly like you did um, in Anantasana. You're going to have your hands supporting you against the wall, place that leg up, and you're coming to Vrikshasana here. So that is one option. The other option is to pray, be against the wall. So if you really are struggling with balance, we will try and explore both options, right? So from um, Tadasana, you've got your hand against the wall, whichever leg is facing into the room, you're gonna bend that leg up and try to get it right at the very root of the upper thigh. If your foot keeps slipping, press the outer thigh strongly into the foot. This foot and thigh connection has to be absolutely strong and the outer thigh is to work so that you're not collapsing to the wall. So stands tall on that standing leg. This Baddha Konasana leg, you're finding that action of opening the groin and bringing that buttock in. You extend from the front thigh to the knee. And then if you have your balance, Bring your hands into the prayer position, stand tall, find your focus, and then stretch your arms up to Urva Hastasana. Just be there with your breath for a few moments. When you need to come down, when you need to release, you'll gently just bring the hands down, bring the leg down, and come back to Tadasana. And then turning around, we'll do the other side. Onyx is doing <laughs> a terrible attempt at Rikshasana. So from Tadasana, again, he's standing tall in Tadasana. So bring that awareness, bring that call to action. When you feel ready, hand is against the wall for balance and you taking that right leg up. As you take the right leg up, there's that extension from the inner groin to the inner knee, wrapping around and drawing that outer buttock and outer thigh in. Stand tall on the standing leg. Don't allow that standing hip to collapse to the wall. You want to be absolutely tall so that you're not collapsing. And then from this thigh, knee down. When you feel balanced, when you feel ready, you come away from the wall, from Urva Namaskarasana. You either go to Urva Hastasana, where the hands are apart, or you take the palms together. Breathe here. Just explore your own body. Find some quietness and stillness in the, your brain. Make those minute adjustments and then release back to Tadasana and have a few breaths in Tadasana. So we're coming now to Trikonasana. In Trikonasana, when you turn the feet to go into Trikonasana, you want to keep this outer buttock in. You want to keep that extension of the inner thigh, that drawing in of the buttock. So you're coming to Trikonasana as if you're in between two panes of glass. You want to line your body up over this leg. And it comes from this external rotation of the thigh. So come to stand in Tadasana in the middle of your mat. And you can either step or jump the feet apart, whatever's within your practice. Jump on the inhalation, stretch across the arms. At any point, if you need to take your hands down, you do. Turn the left toes in and turn the whole right leg out right from the root of the thigh. So you're getting that external rotation like you did in Baddha Konasana. Keeping that buttock in, extend over your leg and rest your hand lightly wherever it reaches. The top hand can stay up, or if you're a beginner and this is a challenging pose for you, bring the hand into the waist. And then just breathe here and use the exhalation to soften any tension in the shoulders and the neck. As you inhale, you extend the spine, you extend and open the front body. 
as you exhale, you bring that right buttock in, opening that front groin, exactly what you just did a moment ago. Then keep the strong, the strength in this back leg. You have to open up the pelvis by taking this front left thigh back. Firm up the legs, the knees, compact the hips and extend up on an inhalation. Use that inhalation to find buoyancy to come up. Turn the feet, rest the hands on your hips and just take a breath here. And just notice any areas where you find tightness where you're holding the breath. Just compose yourself again in preparation for Trikonasana to the left. So extend the arms, turn the feet to Utita Pajva, and from here, extend over in Utita Trikonasana. You're lining yourself up over that left leg by keeping that left buttock in and opening up the chest. Breathe. Exhale, press into this outer right foot, ground down. Inhale, open up the chest. Each exhalation you use for strong actions like bringing this left buttock in, but also on an exhalation, use it to soften any tension in the shoulders, any tightness in the jaw. The inhalations help to find extension, openness, so breathe in the pose. And when you're ready to come up, you find that grounding element of the legs. And as you inhale, you lift into that right arm, you use that inhalation to come up. Turn the feet and bring the feet together, hands at your sides. And here again, it's a soft standing pose, just absorbing the actions of the pose, the body, how the body feels. Right, so we're gonna repeat Vrikshasana now. This time, taking the buttocks towards the wall. Don't be too close to the wall because you want to, once you've stabilized yourself, push off the wall and be standing on your own two feet. From here, you're going to stand firmly on the left leg, bend up the right knee, take it right up to the inner thigh. If your leg keeps slipping, you know, wear shorts. Don't leave the foot against the knee because you're putting pressure on the knee sideways, which you shouldn't do. And if you really are unable to just have the foot pressing lightly against the ankle, trying to get it right up onto the inner thigh though. Again, don't allow the foot to bully the inner thigh. Outer thigh has to come in. The hips are compact. Outer thigh is pushing against that foot. Find that Badakonasana rotation. With your fingertips against the wall, just stand tall. Take your gaze just ahead of you and don't look at anything in particular. Find your balance, find some quietness. When you feel ready, you bring your hands to Namaskarasana. From Namaskarasana, extend to Urva Namaskarasana or just take the hands apart to Urva Hastasana. Keep that contact of the foot. Keep that right buttock coming in, that openness in the groin. And Diana is doing a very good job of keeping the knee down. The advantage is, yes, if you lose your balance, you've got the wall there. You can really get nice openness in your chest. Release when you're ready, coming to Tadasana. And just take a breath here. We engage the body in Tadasana. Now, bend up the left leg. Use the wall, get that action of the right outer thigh, get that openness. So you're trying to get this knee down. That one works much better than this one. <laughs> when you're ready, remembering to keep that standing leg firm, find that quietness in your brain, and then come to Urva Namaskarasana, or keep your hands shoulder distance apart. Breathe as you open up that groin to take the knee back. You're opening the armpits and taking the upper arms back. Don't hold the breath as you hold the pose. Breathe, explore the breath in this pose. That length and narrowness in the lungs. When you feel ready, when you've had enough, you release and you come back to your Tadasana. Just be there for a moment. So the standing leg in Vrikshasana is obviously the anchor point of your Vrikshasana. And effectively in Utita Trikonasana, it's the back leg. So we're gonna repeat Utita Trikonasana.
come to stand in the middle of your mat, bring the fingertips to the chest from Tadasana, you're jumping or stepping the feet apart. Now, turn the feet to Pajra. And when you come over the right side, it's this left leg that's your anchor. So you have to anchor the left side of the body using this left arm, keep this left arm alert. And this left leg especially, you have to ground into that outer foot, lift the inner arch to the inner thigh. So where you had the Vrikshasana foot a moment ago on your inner thigh, that has to resist back. So inhale, extend the right side of the body, draw the right buttock in, anchor the left inner thigh back, open up, open up from that right groin to this left groin and breathe. As you exhale, you bring that right buttock bone in, you open up on the inhalation, extend to your maximum, feel that Vrikshasana foot as you anchor that left foot down and then on an inhalation, up you come. Turn the feet. You can rest your arms at any point from Pada Uttita Padahastasana. You turn the feet. You could maybe go a little bit wider on your feet. And then strong arms, but soften the shoulders. On an inhalation, lift the chest. Exhale. Tuck in that left buttock. As you go on that exhalation, ground that right foot. Engage that right inner thigh where you had the left foot in Vrikshasana. That same Baddha Konasana action of extending from the left inner groin and opening up that left groin and tucking in this right outer thigh butter. Just breathe here for a few breaths. If this is challenging for your shoulders, if you're a beginner, you're welcome to bend the elbow and just rest the hand lightly on your hip, on your waist, wherever is comfortable for you. You want the shoulders away from the ears. When you're ready, buoyancy in the chest, as you inhale, extend into that right arm, turn the feet and come to Tadasana. In Tadasana, just be up for a few minutes. So these poses are good basic poses to practice um, if you're building up into Virabhadrasana 2 and Pajra Konasana. We're not going to hold these two poses for too long, but all the same principles apply. So on an inhalation, step or jump the feet apart. Turn the feet to the right, remembering that rotation, that external rotation of the right leg and the earth element of the left leg. As you exhale, resist that left arm back, bend the right knee, come to Virabhadrasana 2, where this thigh is parallel to the floor. And here, especially this left thigh has to work. In the classic pose, you look over the hand. From here, exhale, beginner Pajra Konasana, take your elbow to the right knee, use the elbow to push that knee back, and you can either keep this hand in your waist, reminding this left thigh to resist, or you can come to the classic pose where this top arm rotates and comes over your head, a nice strong straight line. Be firm on the heel of the right foot, not the toes. If you're able to take your hand towards the floor, next to the outer ankle you do. You can of course use a brick also. When you're ready, strong into the left leg, inhale, sweep this left arm up, come through, yeah, and turn the feet. So you don't come through Virabhadrasana too. Turn the feet to the left. Again, now the right leg is your anchor point. So extend into the arms, exhale as you bend, you move this right hip, towards the left, you keep the right shoulder over the left. Same Baddha Konasana action. On an exhalation, take your hand to your knee, use your elbow on your knee, take the top hand either into the waist or over your head. Remembering this anchoring of this right outer foot, the action of that right leg. Breathe here for a few moments. If you're able to take your foot, your hand to your foot, you do hand on the outer ankle, lock the elbow. When you come up, you straighten the left leg. So inhale, strong right side, turn the feet and come to Tadasana. So before you do Shirshasana in a practice, um, it's best to learn Shirshasana with the aid of someone, a friend or a teacher, um, not just go at it on your own in a, on an online platform. So 
Rather than doing Shirshasana, we're going to do Prasarita Parottanasana and you'll take whatever support you need. So taking your feet apart, you're going to take your hands underneath your shoulders. You want to keep your thighs strong, your spine long. If you cannot reach the fingertips to the floor and you are rounding your back and really struggling, then take some bricks so that you can have a little bit of support to get the spine nice and long. If you are a little bit more flexible and you're able to begin coming into the fuller expression of Prasarita Parottanasana, then you're going to come to your full Prasarita Parottanasana. If you plan on staying here, take a little bit of support, something to rest your head. Outer elbows in, legs are firm, spine is long, and you just be in whichever Prasarita Parottanasana um, is accessible for you, using whatever supports you need. You're trying to maintain the strength in the legs. You're trying to release the sides of the trunk, make the spine long, let the head hang, so that you get used to that feeling of being inverted. The first inversion you do learn is Salamba Sarvangasana, which is shoulder balance. And shoulder balance, you come into it from Halasana using supports. So when you're ready from Prasarita Parottanasana, you're going to come up. You're going to walk your feet in if you need to. So don't just jump the feet together. And then we're coming to either Urva Prasarita Padasana, where from all fours, Take your buttocks to the wall, scrunch yourself down and roll so that the buttocks stay on the wall and your feet are up the wall. If you're not very flexible, you might not be able to get your buttocks to the wall. Extend the legs, make sure you're in a nice straight line and you're going to rest here. If you're not, um, if you are doing shoulder balance, just make sure that you do not have a neck or shoulder injury. You will need a little bit of support. We use A4 shoulder balance foams, then A4 size, and they're firm. You're going to place your four shoulder balance foams to create a platform. If you don't have these, just get a bunch of sturdy blankets. One blanket, you'll go over the foams so that there's softness and smoothness and it holds the foams together. You need a strap to measure your outer shoulder to outer shoulder. So Diana is gonna show you how to measure the strap. And then a second blanket is for your head, just a little bit of softness beyond the support of the shoulder balance foams. So once you've measured from outer shoulder to outer shoulder, you can test whether it's the correct measurement for you by hooking your elbows into the strap behind you and seeing do you have enough space that the elbows can stay together in that manner. To measure up the distance from the wall, if I sit on the edge of the foams, I should be able to reach my heels to the wall. So come and sit facing the wall. The heels to the wall, the buttocks are on the foam. So when she's got her shoulders on the foam, she'll be able to reach her feet to the wall. So lying down with your head to the wall, have your strap so you know where it is. You can either hook it on one elbow already or just hold it in your hand. Make sure you get that movement of the flesh of the shoulders down. You want a little bit of space to rest your, your top shoulder on. You need to decide what actually works for you. If you need more support, if it doesn't feel comfortable and you need more height, you'll take extra height. So before you go up, make sure that you are comfortable. If there are any folds in the blankets that are gonna annoy your neck, then make sure you get rid of those. You'll notice Diana's put a brick here. This helps as a launch pad to get your buttocks over your shoulders. Just be mindful when you're coming down that you're on it. And the reason we use the height is so when you come onto your top shoulder, C7, the one that sticks out, has got space and you're not gonna be compressing it and putting a lot of pressure on it. So when you're ready, you're gonna kick your feet over your head, take your feet to the wall. If you have the flexibility and you've done this before and you're able to get your feet to the floor, then by all means do. Here, you want to keep the sides of the body lifted. 
You're going to take your hands through the strap and place the strap onto your upper arm just above the elbow. Feel that you have wrapped the bicep out and tucked the outer upper arm in. The shoulder blades have to lift up away from the floor and you want to roll onto the top shoulder. When you're ready, you place your hands on your back. From Halasana, you either take one leg up at a time or two legs, whatever's within your practice. And this is Salamba Sarvangasana. Salamba Sarvangasana, shoulder balance. You want to bring that alignment of the side body that you had in um, Anantasana. So the shoulders line up with the hips, line up with the knees, with the ankles. The legs are working and extending up. The buttocks are moving up towards the heels so that there's no weight collapsing on the body. You're taking the weight onto the top shoulder, the upper arms, and you're lifting the shoulder blade region into the body to bring the chest to the chin. The chest lifts to the chin. Make sure the back of your neck is long and that the throat and the jaw are quietly released. When you're in this pose, try to just focus on lifting up, making the pose light. Keep the breath flowing through that closed throat. That Jalandara Bandha. Gaze is towards the solar plexus, the heart center. When you need to adjust, you adjust. You position the hands, extend up. And when you need to come down in your own time, you come down. Back through Halasana. Again, one leg at a time, two legs together if that's within your practice. Remove the strap. Make sure you set it aside so you don't roll onto the metal bits. And also remember you got the brick, so gently unroll yourself. Don't whip your head up, unroll yourself, and quietly just roll down and rest your head on the blanket. This is where, so you either come away from your brick and get your head and your shoulders on the same height, or if you remove the brick, you slide down, shoulders on the floor, head on the phones. You slide down this way now to release. Be there for a few breaths, letting the shoulders, the neck just release and relax. I'm just going to end off with a few very um, quick forward bends. Paschimottanasana is a good release after shoulder balance. So sit on your shoulder balance firms that are ready at hand. And Dandasana, your legs are extended out in front of you. Because this is a restorative Paschimottanasana, we're taking the feet hip distance apart. And as it is a restorative Paschimottanasana, we are also going to use some support. So folded blankets or a bolster are nice to have. When you're ready, you're gonna extend your hands towards your feet. If you're unable to reach your toes, you'll just use your strap and then resting your elbows on the blanket, you'll exhale. If you can come a little bit more forward, you'll keep coming forward. The aim would be eventually to rest your head also on the bolster. So feet apart, so it's nice and quiet. Softness in the shoulders. You could take a chair. You could take a bench or just some extra height and rest your head. Make it a quiet knee pose. Because we've worked on that external rotation of the thigh, we're just going to end off just touching on Jano Shishasana, also a great seated pose. So coming up from your Paschimottanasana, as you did in the tree pose, you're going to bend up your right leg, keep the left leg extended. You're going to turn your body towards your extended leg, keep the head of that knee back and come forward to the extended leg. Again, if you need the strap, you use the strap. If you're able to keep an extension in the spine, an extension in the front body, then you're going to go towards the foot. But here today, the focus is on this external rotation. 
getting that outer thigh to descend. And it's not taking your head to your knee. Janu is knee, Shisha is head. It's Janu Shisha, the head of this knee. This has to move back and down. So it's all those actions we've been working on today. Come up, extend the right leg, back to Dandasana. Adjust yourself on your seat if you need. And then keeping the right leg alert, spine long, bend the left leg to Baddha Konasana. With the same actions of that Baddha Konasana leg, take hold of the strap or your right foot. You want to find this, in, this um, extension of the front body. So again, don't just aim at getting the head to the knee. You want to aim at getting the head towards the shin, but it's the head of this left knee that stays back. And then against that, you extend forward to that right leg. Each inhalation, extend the spine, lift the chest. Each exhalation, press that left knee back, ground the right leg and go forward. Then coming up, extend the leg to Dandasana. And we'll complete today's class coming to Shavasana. So move all your supports out the way. If you are somewhere where it is cold, then make sure you're going to be warm enough. If you take a blanket for your head to help extend the back of the neck and also just a little bit of softness for the head is quite nice for Shavasana. You're going to take a folded blanket for your head, supporting the neck also. If you'd like to have a bolster underneath the knees, then taking a bolster underneath the knees does help to quieten into the pelvic region that we've worked today, but make sure that the center of the knees on the center of the bolster and that it's not too much on the thigh, that the heels can still be grounded. You move all the supports away from you the support under the knees is generally quite nice for people with back issues, but if it's uncomfortable for you, then obviously don't take it. Once you've aligned the body, the left and right sides of the body are equally placed. On an exhalation, close the eyes. On an exhalation, quieten the skin and the muscles of the face, especially the cheeks and the jaw. As you exhale, soften across the chest, the collarbones, and let that top shoulder release to the floor. Make sure that from the back at the shoulder blade region, all the flesh and the skin of the shoulder blades is down the back, and the back waist is long. The flesh of the buttocks has been moved towards the heels. Happens a little bit easier with the bolster. The palms face up in a gesture of receiving. And the fingers are just softly curled, palms quiet. In the same manner, let the feet just flop out to the sides. Soften and relax the toes, the sole of the foot, the arches, the ankles. Each exhalation, just sink a little bit more to Mother Earth. If you struggle to keep light out, to keep the eyes closed, what you can also do is either have an eye bag taking your strap, holding it in half and in half on the eyelids, the darkness that the eye um, that the strap provides. You can soften the eyes, relax the temples, the mouth, the lips are touching but barely touching. You need to keep the tongue relaxed right to the root. So the bottom jaw is just slack. Tongue is rested cheeks, the jaws, the shoulders completely let go. Soft inhalations, quiet releasing exhalations.
come, acknowledge them, release them, come back to the breath. So this quietness of the senses in Shavasana is preparation for a meditation practice. Just be with the breath, keep the mind still and passive. Focus back to your breath. Just try to let the inhalations become a little fuller. Each inhalation is going to draw that vital chronic energy to every cell of the body. We bring life to the body by rubbing the thumb across the fingertips. Gently wiggle your toes. And on the next inhalation, stretch your arms over your head. You are more side of your thigh. And when you bend your knees, roll onto your right elbow. Let the left side of the body just hold the right side of the body a little bit long in this quiet Shavasana state that you can hopefully tap into at the rest of your day. When you're ready, using the left hand to support you, come up into a seated position. Once you're seated, lift up your spine. In your hands in the prayer position, and with the eyes closed, just come back to your breath. With a small smile on your face, just take a moment to give thanks for the health and strength of your body and your dedication in coming to your mat today. Let's breath in, let the eyes gently flutter open and focus. Namaste. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> See you next time.